Welcome back, everybody. All right, let's keep going. We got some more pentimenting to do. All right. So now we got to go eat. Let's go look what are our little objectives here is. Another day on those pages. Uh, Clara kindly gave me some food for dinner. I should see if Otto and Edris are around. Um, Otto is working below the abbey between the guest house and the abbot's house. Okay. <laughs> Let's go eat. Mm, food. Tormatora. Cloyster. A really cool Pokemon. Let's see if anyone's here. I wonder how much I should be like running around and seeing what's changed. Okay, like, is this one of those games? here. Is that, um, what, well, Martin? Yep. Go away, Andreas. You can't see him. Can't you see I'm busy? You know, if you're looking for a to pilfer from the Baron, I recommend smaller valuables. What? What are you talking about? I'm not... Remember, the Baron won't keep his riches on the first floor. Small items are easier to trade or sell. I understand. You won't be standing out here, though. It's far... You shouldn't be standing out here, though. It's far too obvious. Is it? I mean, be quiet. I'm not doing anything. It's been a busy day. I'm having a break, enjoying the sun. Nothing more. Wink, understood, Martin. Go away, Andreas. I can't. I can't. I can give you a cut of the sale if you just stop talking and get lost. Half the money, I go tell much. How much? I don't need your money. Wait, who's McCloss? Uh huh. I don't need the money, but thank you for offering. I'll leave you to it. Yes, please go away. Adrius and Otto, there they are. Good day, Master Mailer. Ah, Andreas, good to see you. I trust Claire gave you my message. Afternoon, Adrius, Otto. Claire did give me your message. I'm sorry I missed you this morning. I was still asleep when you came by. Ah, the abbot really just... The abbot really lets you get away with anything, doesn't he? Leave him be, Otto. I'm hungry. Let's pray. Bless us, O Lord, and these your gifts which we're about to receive from your bounty. <laughs> Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 How did your morning treat you? I had a bad morning. Barely got anything done. My next aching anyway. How did your morning treat you? Not too bad, thanks. I hurt my damned hand splitting tumber to replace a bad beam in the abbot's house. It's not bad it, of an injury. It just galls me that the abbot bleeds his dry and we're expected to do work here when it suits him. Galls, a parasitic growth which develops on oak trees. Uh, caused by wasps laying their eggs under the tree bark. Gall, uh, oak galls are traditionally harvested and sold into iron ink used in manuscripts. Interesting. It's like food item to eat. Oh, I can't eat their shit. Mmm. Sheep's milk cheese. So let's eat the rye bread first. Oh, it's not all that bad. I got a lot of good work from the Abbey. Casting pilgrims badges isn't really smithing, but I don't mind. It's like food item to eat. Sheep's milk. Mmm. Cheese. Anyway, I saw you walking with that Baron Rothvogel in the meadows on your way here. What's that all about? He's here to check on a commission. I understand he's friendly with Father Matthias. I hear pressure brother Pero and Fenchy Minsky is looking at him. Try to that he's here to terrorize the people of Cassie and Carousel. <laughs> sure. Oh, right. I saw him get into it with Lucky this morning. I'm not one for gossip, but that can't be good for anyone. Hmm. Odd, I've been in a fair number of scraps, and I know the type of man will look for any excuse for the fight. Lucky doesn't seem like the type. No, you're right. Lucky doesn't look for fights, but when fights find him, he's not one lying on the ground at the end. And if he's arguing with Rothfogel, he must have had a good reason. It seems like the Baron left more than one bad impression on his last visit in ta to Tassing. If 
Father Mateus knew him well, but he had misgivings about the man. What kind of misgivings? That he fools around with young woman. He's married, of course. Otto, that's only gossip, and it isn't Christian to spread rumors like that. It's not gossip that he beat up the farmer a few years back. Old Rannig, may he rest in peace. Well, it wasn't. I wasn't there, so I don't know. But if he did that, yes, it speaks poorly of his character. He had a long conversation when he up here, but he didn't mention anything about that. What did you talk about, then? I mean, no offense, but what does a nobleman have in common with an artist? He talked to me about my work, my under through my time at the university, various other things. Quite well educated. Sure, I imagine you have a lot of time to read when you don't have a worry where your next meal is going to come from. This bitterness and envy are not good for our Christian souls, Otto. It's not envy, Edris. No one should get away with what he does, what this uh, Abby does. No offense to you, Edris. I don't have any problem with the books the Abby makes. I mean, I never did learn to read, but if people are paying the Abby to make them, it doesn't bother me. No, I understand. I see why you resent the Abbot's rule. He's a harsh lord. Uh, Otto. Ah, uh, Otto. Did you see that bearish sheep? Oh, uh, Otto, did you see the bearish sheep escape the grazing fields again? No, but I'm not surprised. Martin was supposed to fix that fence, and he probably did a bad job at it. Martin's that little kid. Little troublemaker. He's always in a foul mood, and he could be the laziest sow in testing. He can't, or soul in testing. He can't even hold a hammer properly. Married and f married and a father at such a young age, and he barely lifts a finger for his wife or child. Wait, Martin's married? On top of that, he's a damn thief. And before you say it, Idris, that's more than just gossip. Look at him over the by the guest house. He's probably figuring out what he can steal with the least amount of effort. I admit, he seems as who's a born striker. Sure, I know one when I see one. Heh, <laughs> especially when you look in a mirror. Damn. Damn. Speaking of the bower sheep, their ewes are shorn and the woman will be spinning it soon, Otto. I got it, just no need to tease. Well, God wants to happen, will happen. Looks like the storm's coming. We should probably get back to it. Right, I'll catch up in a moment, Idris. Oh, Andreas, uh... Say hello to Eva for me, if you get a chance. Man, everybody's swooning over this Eva. Oh, of course. I should return to work in the scriptorium. Until later. <laughs> Eat. Work. Eat. A few more pages after noon work. Time to get back to work. What if I don't? Be with you, Andreas. Oh, God, be with you. What? Alright, let's get back to work. Oh, a lot of people here. Mateo. God bless you, Andreas. Hello, brother Mateo. What are you doing out here? I thought you were aware of the addition to my role as Christoph Sac Sacrist. I tend to the shrine of Saint Mort. He is a patron of Tessing and Kerslaw both, so it is my duty to ensure his regulars were cared for. The shrine is always beautifully kept. I, when I remember this, I always been inspired. The martyrdom of Saint Mort Moritz provides inspiration to us all. You are familiar with the life of Saint Mortis, are you not? I've been so focused on my past, I've never had a moment to learn. I'm afraid I don't have a habit of learning about every Santa Claus. Okay. Well, you ought to learn something about testing's pay, pay, uh, Patreon while you're here. Patreon. Patreon while you're here. By all means, St. Mor Moritz was most widely known for his martyrdom in the hands of the Romans. He protected a town of Christians from slaughter, and in turn, he and his legion were decimated. What do you mean his legion? Wouldn't... Wouldn't that mean he was a Roman soldier? Yes, he was a Roman citizen and led a legion made of entirely of Christians into Bavaria. When he refused to kill the Christians, even though they were traitors to Rome, the emperor had his legion massacred. Most of the pilgrims who visit come knowing only this, if anything about his life. However, 
Tessing venerates St. Moritz because he is the one who converted the town to same and saved it from destruction. Tessing was pagan? I had no idea the town was so old. Indeed, he and his legions were snowed into this pass and the townsfolk refused to aid them. The daughter of the town's leader, Satya, was moved in spirit and snuck from the house to convert. She led Mortz to the spring, and as soon as she was baptized, the snow melted, revealing all manner of fruit. Mortz and his legion were saved by these miraculous gifts. The town was converted, and the rebels fled into the mountains. So what happened to Satya? She, too, was martyred for her faith to the rebels by the rebels inhabiting the town. Now her shrine protects Tassing from harm. What an ascendant story. Thank you for the history lesson. You are welcome, Master Mailer. God bless you. Till later, brother. No reason to be rude. Even if it all sounds like bullshit. Carl. Carl. Oh, hello, Andreas. Hello, Carl. You seem busier than usual today. I'm behind my work. I went up to the shrine of St. Moritz this morning to pray for his aid. The candle I lit had all but burnt away. I was there so long. Now I need to catch up. You go to the shrine very often. Your dedication. If I'm ever in church so long, I must have fallen asleep. Do you go to the shrine often? I usually go every autumn for a good harvest. Now that Helen is pregnant, I've tried to go pray every week. Her mother had a trouble, had trouble in childbirth. So I pray. Or so I've been paying visits to Moritz's hand and setting his shrine uh, to pray for their aid. Do you really think the saints will hear you? Moritz's hand has done many miracles in Tessin. If he can restore the hand of a monk, then surely he can help Helena. I hope that saints hear your prayers. Thank you, Andreas. So do I. Again, no reason to be rude. Alright, so a lot of people are praying. Let's go to the shrine and see what's up. Anything going on in here? Nope. Just empty. Okay. It's a little rainy. Yeah, let's get back to work. You're not singing, Rudiger? Okay. Evidently not. Was, didn't somebody want a book? Let's see if we could uh, sneak back in and grab that book that person wanted. Uh, the Can I go in there? Okay, no. Alright, fair enough. Maybe I gotta go later tonight for the, uh, the Romanian. Oh, very busy today. Rather addict, this work, I don't know where to start. Inconsistent spacing, rough strokes. You're working like you want to see this place closed. Brother Pryor, I am working on the best of my abilities and I dispute your criticism. I may not be fast, but I still have my talent. Praise be to God. <laughs> and brother guy, why are you still on this page? What's wrong with you? Normally you're so reliable. Many apologies, brother Pryor. I will work harder. This guy's, uh, kind of a douche. Piero, I can't believe this. Baron Rutherford Vagra has come to check on his progress, and this, this is all you have? You should have finished this months ago. Is your mind so corrupted by age that you didn't notice the seasons have changed? Well, you're not the one who will have to answer for it, so why should you care? Typical. Excuse me, prior finding, but I believe your point is made. Andreas, I will remind you that I am the master of the scriptorium, and you are a guest here. I agree, Brother Pryor. Brother Piero's work is unacceptably slow. You are insufferable, Brother Guy. Oh, God, give me the patience to endure this. Please, everyone, this is my work, and I accept responsibility for it. Pryor Fenry is right. Fenric, is this mine? 
It must be, yes. It is, my lord. I can exp... No, no, I don't want excuses. I've come all this way, and I have to be honest, I expected more. It's nowhere near finished, and the style is, well, it's very old-fashioned. I thought I made my desires clear. I feel like my generosity toward Kristoff is being taken advantage of. Am I the fool in the sand story? Uh, I, of course not, my lord. Never. We can fix this, of course, of course. We only want to accommodate you. Ah, Andreas, good to see you again. How should I respond? Abby seems really annoyed, so I should probably be proper. Just now, don't irritate. Simply address him as my lord would be appropriate. Greet him with a Christian name. Your brothers and comrades are hit. Just now, don't irritate the abbot. Simply address my lord. It acknowledges him respectfully without being over familiar. Uh, my lord... Fragger, why not have Andreas complete the rest of the illustrations? He's clearly capable. Well, my lord, is not. why not have Brother Guy complete it if, uh, if speed is your concern? No, no, I'm not talking about the script. That's fine. But the art, the illustrations. I want Andreas to do the others. Uh, of course, I mean, if Andreas is all right with it. If it takes the pressure off Brother Piero, it would be the light to complete work. Well, I, I, well I'm trying to finish my masterpiece well. I will do what I have to do. If it takes the pressure off Brother Piero, I'll be glad to complete the work. There we have it. I hope this allays your concerns, my lord. Excellent. By the way, Father Abbott, am I still welcome at your table for supper? Naturally, my lord. Wonderful. I'd like Andreas to join us. My lord, I've already made several plans with the Drucker family this time. In town. Nonsense. You can eat with them any day. I'm only here for the evening. Well, father... Uh, well, it would be quite unusual. Unusual not. I doubt my good friend, the Prince Bishop, would deny additional guests at his table. What do you think? I understand. Yes, you're right, of course. Andreas may join us for supper. I look forward to it. Oh, man. Oh, boy. You. You had this planned. You must have put your hook in the Baron this morning when you ambushed him in town. I'll go to hell for it. Why are you mad at me? I'm trying to help. It's beyond ridiculous. Listen to yourself. Why are you mad at me? I'm trying to help. Brother Pryor, Andreas is not to blame for any of this. I am. Yes, you are. And, you are, and you've are, and you embarrassed me. The Abbot and the Abbey. Pryor Fenric is right, of course. No wonder we don't get more commissions. Guy, can you stop flattering the Pryor for one minute? If anyone is embarrassed here, it's you, Fenric. You're insincere... And you're so obvious about it, guy. You're so insincere and you're so obvious about it, guy. Brothers! If you please, Sister Zedna, and I would prefer if you could keep your noise down. It sounds like Samsung slaying the Philistines in here. Of course. Get back to work, everyone. Well, that was not wonderful, but there's nothing to be done about it now. I'll finish my work here and wash up in the laboratory for supper at the abbot's table. Vespers eat. A few more pages. Supper at the abbot's table. Well, then, another few pages. Lunch is done. It was nice catching up with Otto and Andres. But it was about time I head back to the script to work on the book for hours. Friends invited me to eat at the abbot's table. I'm not sure I'm welcome, but I can't refuse the invitation. I should wash up in the lavatorium in the cloister, then join the brothers in our factory. are going to be upset that I didn't make the, that one family. Ugh. Maybe I should say fuck it and go anyways. What would happen? Piero. Andreas, I'm so glad you can join us for supper. Though the circumstances are unusual, to be sure. 
I won't be able to speak with you. None of the brothers will, but it'll be good to have you with us. That's a shame. I always enjoy our talks. Now, the same doesn't apply to you at the abbot's table. You can talk all you like. Though I wouldn't recommend it. Father Abbot does not look kindly on idle chatter. <clears throat> I wish you could take my place, Brother Piero. You deserve the honor. Anyway, I'm sorry for how the Piero reacted to you. It's not fair. It's humiliating. Oh, no, no, my son. There's no need to worry about me or this, my plaid. And we all need to taste the humility from time to time to keep our feet in this earth. Now, Andreas, you are my pride. I cannot claim to have taught you much, but I am proud to have known you and your work. Aw. And when you leave um, all of us at Kirchlov Abbey behind, you can call upon your friend Lorenz, the Baron Rothfogel, to help you in your career. He's wrong, you know. Fenric is wrong about you being so. There's nothing wrong with your style. It's not old just because of no one's sister. Don't trouble yourself over it. Time passes for us all. Things change. The future will write over the presence. You need not fear it, any of it, so long as you remain true to yourself and God. Now I must hurry to the refractory to join the brothers. I will see you inside. Andreas, glad you could join us. Thank you, my lord. Father Gernot, Father Thomas, Prior Frederick. Si uh, Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the Living God. Oh, the Gospel of Matthew. Wonderful. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, sign of jo Joanne, or Jonah. For this is not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you're, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Have you read Matthew much, Andreas? Not really, to be honest. <clears throat> I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on the earth will be loosed in heaven. <laughs> so awkward. Then the ordeal... Then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. That reminds me of Fa that reminds me, Father Gunnar. Have you read anything by Martin Luther? I I can't say that I. He has incredible ideas about the church. Brilliant, I think. This guy's trying to start shit. Mhm. Mm Everyone's pissed. My lord, is the meal to your liking? I believe I remember you enjoying our quail on your last visit. The quail, my God, Father, about the quail's fine, but don't you think Luther's ideas are worth discussing? He's talking about the future of the church, shaking things up on a way I don't think we've seen before. Father Thomas, you see value in his, in his ideas, do you not? My lord, I mean no offense, but I do not. Brother Matteo, yes, how appropriate. What are your thoughts on Luther's attacks on the church sale of indulgences? Baron, please, do not involve the other brothers in this conversation. Fine, fine, whatever. What about Andreas? Uh-oh. Certainly a man who attended the same university as Martin Luther could spare some thoughts on his work. Uh, he's really put me in a difficult position. And I joined the bay and may bring everyone closer to understand the church. I need to be quiet. I don't know what else to do. To hell with the abbot. He can't handle a little criticism. He doesn't fit this in the fancy table. Why not join in the debate? It might bring everyone closer to the truth. Because the abbey will be furious with me. That's why. Sure, why not? Where should we start? Ah, debate. Excellent. Why not start with the 90, 95 theses? Enough! Andreas, you should know better. Lord Rothvogel, you are our guest and held in high esteem, but you have worn out my patience. You will not be discussing Luther's work with Andreas, Thomas, Mar Matthew, or with any other brother. Is that clear? I suppose, Father. 
It is your Abby. But you've taken too much offense at this, and you're far too afraid of change. Whether it's from Luther or someone else, reformers come to the church. You had better accept it. What? Neither you nor Martin Luther dictate change in the Holy Church on their whim. This talk is beyond insulting. It's blasphemous, outrageous. How dare you? I see. I have overstepped my bounds, and I suppose I have ruined everyone's supper. My apologies. In spite of this unpleasantness, I will make good on my manuscript payment and the donation of my copy of Historia Tessaia. If you cannot accept what future will bring, perhaps it's time for you to come to terms with your past. Well, no need to overstay my welcome. Fathers, brothers, Andreas, good night. Oh boy. Yikes. Why, Andreas? Why did you engage him? I expect better from you. Now then, I must ask you to leave so I can speak with the brothers in, ch in chapter privately. Brother Piero, Piero, please accompany Andreas out. Thomas, I will take my leave as well. Good night. Oh man, they're making the poor old guy walk me out. Stupid. What assholes. Don't worry about the father Gern don't worry about Father Gurnet and the Baron. I'm sure we'll all be fine by morning. I hope Father Abbott can see that the uh, see that the Baron's heart is in the right place, even if he picked the wrong time to express himself. Eh, seems unlike him. It may be so, but we must never lose hope. In any case, I do hope the Baron respects the Abbot's wishes for the rest of his stay for everyone's sake. Brother Piero, what do you think of Martin Luther's ideas? Ha! That is for younger and wiser men than me to decide. I'm just a monk. Thank God. Good night, my son. <laughs> oh, jeez. A few more pages of that awkward supper. I should get some sleep. Yep. Probably. Probably a good idea. Can I go to the shrine? I can go to all these places. Oh, let's go talk to her. God bless you, Andreas. God bless you, Mother Cecilia. Is there something I can help you with? No apologies until later. Okay. Hmm. It's raining. What are you doing out here, Mouse Finger? Mouse Finger? That's like, what, Mouse Biter or something? Alright, let's go. Oh, can I... There's a lamp still burning in the guest house. Lorenz must be still awake. I wonder how he's doing. <clears throat> what was he thinking? He's a baron, but he couldn't expect that to go well. The storm doesn't seem to be letting up anytime soon. Should get back to the Gartners. Can we actually go check the seal? Nope. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, it's a figure. Yeah! Oh, you're alright, Master Mailer. I believe I may have seen the physical manifestation of a spirit. <laughs> the ghost? Yes, maybe. There must be a better explanation than that. Well, I'm not here to tell you what you saw. Wouldn't be the first time people have seen ghosts around these parts. Interesting. I don't think this was a ghost. Have you ever seen one? Mm, usually around the ruins. Who knows how many uh, restless Romans lie beneath those stones. Well, we never did go to the ruins. But I think I found Joanne's last 
uh, last, uh, last lost sheep. I'm going to head home. Take care, Master Meller. I will. Thank you, Tom. You too. We never did go check out the, um, the ruins. I forgot to. Let's go look there. I mean, might as well, right? See who's, like, snooping around over there. Collapse. This must have allowed access to the aqueduct. These must be Paul's drawings. Interesting. Okay. Hmm. Who would have been sneaking around? Ah, no! Pale horses, pale horses, still on the floor. Well, are you all right? In there? Matins, mat, um. What was that saying? Matins, monastic air corresponding to 2 a.m. It's used for the night prayer. Matins, matins. Matins, matins, the pale horse, death! Thomas, sister, listen to my voice. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Amali, yes. Yes, Father, I hear you. Am I here? Is this now? Yes. Yeah, you are with us. And this is now. I... <clears throat> I apologize, Andreas. I imagine that must have been quite alarming. Is she alright? She is, yes. Yeah. Sister Amalia is a mystic, gifted with visions when God seems to give her one. Some are more frightening than others. What is she doing in there? She lives in the church? She lives there, yes. I'm a little surprised you haven't noticed her before. If you came to Mass more, mass more often, you would see that I give her communion through a window in her cell. Her cell? She is an, an she is an anchoress? A religious hermit so devoted to God that she has enclosed herself in a cell next to the church. Jesus. She is dead to the world, but continues a life of prayer and religious contemplation. And sometimes, ever so rarely, she receives a great and terrible visions. Is she local to Tessing, or is she a nun at Kirsthoff? Neither. She came here from a Benedictine Abbey in Lower Bavaria after it burned down. I am here. I am her confessor and caretaker. Many anchoresses are not literate. I write down her visions to help interpret them. I thought all the monks and nuns at Kirsthoff could read. Even poor brother Volkberger, Bert Volkbert. Thank you, Father Thomas. I must rest now. Hmm. I wonder why it changes the fonts. Oh, because he knows that she doesn't read. Is it like something to do with like her intelligence level or something like that? Or like her liter liter literacy level? Of course, sister. <clears throat> she seems unhappy. She is not unhappy, but she is in pain, both physically and spiritually. Her spiritual pain comes from her revelations. They come and go. I try to adjust them as best I can. The physical pain comes from a deformity in her spine and aching in her joints. I know I have no cure for that save prayer to the Almighty. Sister Emily is saying she had a bad vision of death. Could someone be in danger? <clears throat> oh, no. Don't touch the judgment. The visions are divine and powerful, but they could have many meanings. Some of her revelations take years to comprehend. Some may never be understood at all. As God wills it. Still, the argument at dinner was quite troubling. Perhaps it has cast a shadow over our thoughts. Now then, good. the good sister appears to have fallen back to sleep. I must prepare for Ben myself. Good night, Andreas. Good night, Father. Oh. Hmm. I don't think we explored all this either, did we? I don't remember. Look at them piggies. I don't think we explored all this. Hmm, these wood carvings are quite curious. Tilia's home. All right, this is the pagan. I'm 
join Bower Farm. Joanna's family keeps me heads with the honey and wax. Oh, all the sheep are gone now. This is Zimmerman house. <coughs> Yeah, okay, so we couldn't go here earlier. Alban Bakery, North Town, Steinauer House. Oh, Pet Schlau. <clears throat> Cold Schlau. <laughs> Let's go to North Town. More ruins? I wonder if they're from the old Roman colony. Stolz house. Casting is lucky to have so much wood. Okay, we are at that. Interesting. Alright, so we got more places to explore, essentially. Cool. sleep oh this is a little creepy maybe don't stand there let's go to sleep the patriarchs of Kita solomon the hepatitis prior friend keeps giving me all these books to read i really should clean this up this is getting late i should get some rest go to sleep We sleep very long. Time to get back to work. Everybody going to church? It's still raining. Wow. It's all right, Ursula. Good morning. Good morning. Do you need any help with Ursula? No, a little crying won't hurt her. Besides, I think we've gotten almost all the leaks now. Ursula is my first child, and she's been a handful, but I think I have a hang of it now. So Ursula is her child. Big George has been godsend. He helped Christine and Eva when she was a baby. I never took you for a family man, Andreas. Not yet, but I want to be helpful. I have two older brothers, both married, so there are plenty of nieces and nephews for me to play uncle to. I appreciate the offer. You'll make a fine husband someday, Andreas. Ugh, when will the storm light up? It's been going all morning. Peter and George are outside, trying to deal with the flooding as best they can. Oh, is the farm in danger? I can certainly help everyone soon, right? Oh, is the farm in any danger? There's always any danger with this much rain, but we live through worse. Whatever happens, it will be as God wills it. We must have faith and providence and endure what is to come. Oh, I have some food for you. What a babe. Feeding me. Hey, we're sorry I couldn't prepare anything more. Thank you, I don't want me to say hello. Thank you, I appreciate everything you do. It's Hmm. Oh, as we say hello, he's probably courting her. They're good friends to join him to tell her. So what? They're not married. Are they near there yet? Why not test the waters? If I came between Odin, that would be pretty awful for everyone involved. Hmm. Let's do it. I think I appreciate everything you do. It's sweet. Oh, well, it's nothing really. Oh, I mean it. You'd make a really good wife someday. Kind of you to say. Well, I should be off. I can always make, I can always make time to say a kind word to a beautiful woman. You're a rascal, Andreas Mahler. True. <laughs> At least you're honest about it. Have a good day at the Abbey, Andreas. Try to stay dry. Thanks you too. Good luck. 
You do try to maintain wetness. Be good, Ursula. Oh. Oh boy. Andreas. Are you doing all right, Peter? No, I'm not. Some of our sheep escaped, and I'd rather not spend my morning fixing this damned wall for the third time this year. This is the way it's always is. Rain falls in the abbey and rains downhill to us little people. Well, it's hard to blame the abbey for that. It's just how rain works. There's a reason we're down here and they're up there, Andreas. Anyway, I have to get back to this. See you later. Should build the ditch. Andreas. Good morning, Andreas. So, Otto and Eva, huh? Yes, what about them? How's their courtship developing? Doing fine, you think? I'm not a gossip, Andreas. Why practically asked me to be his messenger? I'm only trying to understand how things stand. Did he really, or did you just assume the part all on your own? You started picking up poor habits during your time at testing, Andreas. It can't be the gardeners. Peter is stern. Maybe the monks talk too much. Well, if you ask me, I think Otto's being a bit too slow about it. Oh? He's old enough already not to be smitten like a boy. They both like each other. Seems to me if you found the right person, you should go for it. That's what I would do. What stopped you? Where is Mr. Schmidt, if I'm asking? Oh, uh, that's a private matter. You haven't found the right person? No. I uh, hope to find someone to have at my side as we build a family. Odd has not given me this blessing. Worry not. It could happen at any moment. One hopes so. I must get back to, to work. And just enough talk. Until later. Hmm. Oh, Rich. God be with you, Andrea. It seems like we have a good spring storm, though I hope it lets up soon. Good morning, I'm sure it'll let up soon. Good morning, it's nine. Uh, good morning, I'm sure it'll let up soon. As God wills it. Agnes. Ulrich, I paid Greta for last week's pumpernickel. Sorry to make you wait for it. It's no trouble at all. Please say hello to Lucky for me. Of course, now I'm off to home, and then to the filers. Filers? Pilers? Good morning, Ernst. What's going on at the filers? And it has about a month to go before a child was due. The last one was hard. He didn't make it. God rest his soul. I just wanted to give her the best chance she can have. It's in God's hands. Trust in Providence. Anyways, Ulrich, I'll do what I can to help. Why make the Lord do all the work? I must be off now. Good day to you both. And Andreas, stay out of the rain. Tell her now I'll pray for her health. Sure, will appreciate that, Andreas. Thank you. Until later. Until later, Agnes. Alban Bakery. Greta. Andreas, such a pleasure to meet, to see you, and looking so handsome as always. Back for more of my rye? Dear Greta, I know I can't stay away from your eye. Andreas, hey. I was passing by and I thought I should say hello. Now I must say goodbye. Aren't you a good man? Well, you're always welcome here, Andreas. And always welcome to my ride. Be well. Until later, Greta. These were the people I was supposed to have dinner with yesterday. Hi. See how pissed he is. Bless you, Andreas. Oh, it's not very. Okay. Mmm, fresh pretzels. Steinauer house. Nobody's home. Okay. Now uh, let's go to North Town.
Bolt house is still locked. Nothing new. Okay. Father, I've said this before, but it isn't good that we have water drains that, but it isn't good that the water drains here so quickly. It's affecting the foundation. It needs to be looked at. I understand, but if you dig here, you may be disturbing the bodies decomposing in the yard. Of course, Father, but they're, but they'll, uh, they're going to be dug back up anyway. Yes, yes, but why disturb them unnecessarily? It's your church, Father. But you can't put this off forever. The foundation is going to crack. I understand. Perhaps after some of the bones have been moved to the off scaries. Thank you, Lucky. Mon. Have a good day, Master Mailer. Good day, Father Thomas. I've been all right with the church. Oh, yes. Lucky was again reminding me of the danger. Severe rainfall can close on the foundation. God looks after his flock, but sometimes the pen... Uh, requires an earthly hand. They'll be taken care of. God be with you, Andreas. And with you, Father, until later. Mm. That's probably gonna come into play at some point. Uh, let's go to the mill. Roman ruins. Anything going on down here? No. No. little hut. <laughs> you want something? I guess not. Evidently not. And it's like smoky. Did you need something, Master Mailer? No, but thank you. Okay. Hmm. Alright, maybe we should just go. The meadow, the shrine. Let's go to the shrine really quick. I got the waterfall. He's still fishing. Oh, old Otto. Okay.
Hello there, Master Mailer. Hey, hello, Tell. Bumped into any ghosts lately? <laughs> uh, no, not since we last spoke. Good, good. Have you ever seen a nicer view? Don't get sick like this in the city, I expect. I, I can't say that Nuremberg has many Roman ruins, no. Oh yeah, testing is full of them. Quite the marvels they are. I don't pay much point to the rating on them, because I can't read Latin, my, Latin myself. But you might enjoy giving them a look. If you do, you'll have to tell me what they match the old legends are about. What sort of old legends? Well, when Father Mateus was at, was at it, he would let me borrow books from the Abbey's library. I think I read through half of that library before Father Gerard became abbot. Okay, so now that we know he reads, we consider him as more, like, intelligent, right? So we change the way his writing is. It's interesting. <clears throat> he and Father Thomas are strict about which books should be read. Books should glorify God, they say, not discuss the old pagan ways. Still, the accounts of the Romans in Tessing were my favorite. The old book talked about how the Roman knight Gaius Metallus defeated the uh, Ratai, I think it was. Heavy snowfall had him caught in this very valley, barbarians on all sides, when Maze sent a wolf to the knight, or Mars, the Roman god of war and agriculture. Mars represents civilization and peace through military might. Instead of killing the beast, Gaius followed it to a magical, uh, magical, oh, some magical something with trees covered in all costs of fruit, all kinds of fruit. Myers provided the wolf and the spring, and Gaius and Metellus found the testing after defeating the barbarians uh, to honor Mars. That's where all this came from. Sounds like a lot. A lot like the story Mateo told me about St. Moritz without the of gods, of course. I hadn't thought of this. Both were snowed... Both were... Snowed into this valley, weren't they? And saved near a spring. I wonder if it's the same story. Oh, I don't know about all that. Uh... Master Mailer. A lot of stories get mixed up over the years. It might be all fable, but I enjoy the stories all the same. It's nice to feel you're connected to those who came before you, even if it's only the land you live on. Wise words, I feel the same. It's been good chatting with you, Master Mailer, but I better get back to work. Let me know if you find any particularly good books in that library. All right. I will, until la until later, Tell. Okay. Martin? Hey, Martin. Grab scaling background. Told him to help his family give... Even advice. Hey, Andreas. I found the shit. Ah, Godspeed, you little thief. <laughs> I should get the scriptorium. Girl will not. Will give me an earphone if I'm late again. God be with you, Andreas. Is God with us? Look at this rain. Are you still preparing to leave even with this weather? The weather is unfortunate, but the Baron's wife, Lady Solomia, will be arriving today. Oh, beautiful. My lord intends to depart as soon as she arrives. How long have they been married? Seven years now. She's a fine woman, a true lady. I was hoping to bid farewell to the Baron before he leaves. I'm sure he would appreciate that. He spoke highly of you before he went to bed. He was glad you were willing to debate him at supper, even though he's sure the abbot will hold it against you. I just love arguing, honestly. Uh, ha, ha, then you and my lord have much in common. Would it be fair to say I found the baron's favor? Oh, look. Yeah. Tried to turn down the baron's supper invitation. You guys ever just eat chips? Mm. I love it. Mm -hmm. 
Although, brand new bag. They feel a little stale, you know? You ever get that? Like, they didn't put a lot of flavor in on this one. And they're crunching a little stale. Brand new bag. Supposed to be good till January, too. Hmm. One second. Excuse me. Thank you very much. I like the way they do this. So it's like kind of like a bar. I wonder if it's like random chance from that point or if it's like depending on how far the bar is filled like there's definitive points where like things will pass or fail. But I do like how it's like oh you know this 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 that. It would. My lord bade me give you a token of his friendship in his absence. He says a small thing compared to future commissions but he hopes that you We'll wear it with pride. Ooh, I'm Hand of the King now. What an extraordinary pin. Please thank the Baron for me. In fact, I'll wear it right now. Mm -hmm. Interesting. In fact, I'll wear it right now. My th Many thanks. As you wish, of course. Where's your mustard gone, then? He went for a walk. Oh, look, we're wearing it. Early in the morning. He didn't say where he'd be back. Hope you return soon. They're insurance and everything. So mad. My lord might surprise you, Andreas. He never mind getting mud on his boots. Of course, I'm the one who has to clean them. <laughs> well, I apologize for taking up so much of your time. Good luck, God's good speed, and I hope you can keep trying. It's no trouble. Many thanks. Until next time, Andreas. Oh, one thing before you go. Did you see a short, shirted looking young man in the hat on your way up this morning? <laughs> Wink, surely you don't mean me. <laughs> no, he was shorter than you by two hands, at least. Mm. Well, I didn't see any short, shirted men. Sorry. Ah, oh, that's a shame. Something I should go. Don't ask. Uh, yeah, don't ask. The more I... Did something happen? Some of my lord's rings went missing, along with some golden... Golden. I don't need to concern yourself, though. My lord is a man of means. He won't miss them. In any case, I must finish preparing the horses. It's good talking to you, Andreas. Of course, I hope the rain lets up pretty soon. God willing. Until next time. Until then. I wonder where he went to. I wonder if, like, if we run around, we might be able to find him. This is a dead end down here, right? I don't know. It goes to the Abbott house, but that's not where he went. Okay. Well, let's get to work, I guess. Oh, 
Oh, this is wonderful. The rest of the abbey is soaked and there's not a drop of rain in here. Good thing the abbot had auto replaced the roof and scriptorium and library last month. With the calefactory next door, we Cal factory. Cal factory, a communal warming room in monasteries. Cal factories are usually attached to the cloister. Baron Kirchhoff is part of the old abbey and therefore connected to the old scriptorium. It keeps the monks warm and library dry. Uh, next door, we can stay warm while everyone else is cold and wet. Instead of bragging about our good fortune, you should think upon your, our brothers and sisters and pray for their health and safety. The abbot's foresight saved a lot of our work and protected it. what's in the library. The town hasn't fared as well. I'm sure they'll be fine. More importantly, if they're not, I don't care. Brother Guy, your heart is harder than the stone on this floor. Huh? We have the grumpy old monk, but where's the nice one? Brother Piero, haven't you seen him yet? You haven't seen him yet today? I did. Before Brother Guy arrived. Brother Piero left to speak to the abbot some time ago. What? Why is Matthew ringing the bell? It can't be terse already. I pray it stops soon. Such a cacophony uh, is an assault on my frail ears. <laughs> well, these two bolts suck. It's not stopping. I suppose this means we're being summoned to the chapter house. God, give me strength to endure the rain. That's 50 feet, old man. You'll live. God, give me the strength to endure this, man. <laughs> It's still not stopping. What's going on? This can't all be because of the storm. Let's just see what's the matter. Hmm. <coughs> Startling scream? Where was it? Old Bailey. Let's go back to the Bailey. Friar's house. Oh, we should take this. So I know that I had to connect the elemental symbols with the Volvo with the astronaut. The signal was on the cipher. But I forgot the connection. I can't decipher it. I thought I'd find next book. I found the secret passage in the crypt. There has to be a book in the library I can use. It's Illuminata is in there most of the day. Perhaps I can find a way in after dark. If all else fails, I perhaps could ask Warner Stoles. He lives off in the North Commons. I have a sense he doesn't like me much, but I'll, f I'll find a way to get the information out of him. Hmm. Hold on, maybe the book will tell me where I need to move to. Uh, brother Mo rang the church bells early and now one of the sisters is screaming in the chapter house. I should see what's going on chapter house. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Dormitory. Dormitory. Yeah. Alright. Uh, chapter house. Coming from just down the hall, maybe the chapter house. Maybe the shoes come from the chapter house? Oh, something terrible happened, Mr. Andreas. Alright, let's go check it out. Hmm, this room. Remain silent. Please, Father, where's Brother Florian? Have him come quickly. Be silent, brother. Brother Florian, if you please. Who got murked? I'm sorry, father. There's nothing to be done. He's dead. Oh, is this the, uh, what's his name? <laughs> Sister Margaret, calm yourself. Sister Gertrude, please take Sister Margaret back to the garden. Yes, Mother Cecilia. Oh, 
Oh shit. God protect us, the Baron was, is, was a friend of the Prince Bishop of, oh, so this was the, oh boy. Our buddy Lorenz, friend of the Prince Bishop of Freezing. Why is he so worried about the Prince Bishop? This abbey is odd in more than one way. Its existence offends some of the church. We are far enough from, are far enough from Rome and Mainz that everyone forgets about us, but this could bring unwanted attention. Florian, how easily do you think you could dispose of the body? Father Abbot, what are you saying? Why are you questioning me? Why are you wasting precious time? I like the, like, the more intense, like all that ink blocks and shit, like that. Do you want to see soldiers of the Prince Bishop marching up to our steps and fleeing your brothers and sisters out of their home? God protect us, oh, no, oh, no, oh, silence, quiet. Calm yourselves, all of you. Father Abbot, Baron Ralph Vogel's manservant is already preparing to leave. The Baron's wife should be here in a matter of hours. This is not the time for rash decisions. Yes, yes, you're right. Forgive me. But then, what will we do? We must send the Baron's men to the court of the Prince Bishop, infesting at once. Mother Cecilia, the Baron said the Prince Bishop's Archde Archdeacon was a was an in Innsbruck for the Imperial Diet. Even better, swift action will silence any whispers of impropriety on our part. Given the Baron's stature, the Archdeacon will undoubtedly come to investigate immediately. We must cooperate with him fully and pray for a speedy resolution. Yes, yes, good. Thank you, Mother Cecilia. Brother Wilschloff, uh, please detain Brother Piero in the cellar until the Prince Bishop's uh, manor eyes. Wait, what? Why? What? Brother Piero, why? That's absurd. You take him. You'll take him over my dead body. Uh, um, yeah, you'll take him over my dead body. Do not test my will, Andreas. It wasn't your will I was going to test, Father. He was caught in f uh, flagranti delictico, covered in blood with knife in his hands. In blazing offense, indicating an individual has been caught in the act of committing a crime. I don't see him covered in blood. Father, do you really believe that Brother Piero is capable of such a foul deed? Yes, capable enough when motivated by anger. I have no anger against the Baron, Father Abbot. I simply came across him like this. No anger? Not even for the insulting your work and forcing you us to give it to Andreas? This is not a subject for debate. When the Prince Bishop's men arrives, we must not be empty-handed. He wasn't, uh, I don't know if we want to rely on Guy's testimony here. Uh, uh, even if Piero wanted to kill the Baron, he's not physically capable of the act. You can barely hold a brush, much less plunge a knife into a man's body. Be quiet, this is not your affair! This is my fear if you're going to make me part of Brad Piero's supposed motive. You're going to be fired, girl. I just don't think this is Brad Piero have done this. I am through debating this with you. My decision stands, Brother Wishloff. We'll detain uh, Brother Piero in the cellar until I say otherwise. Brother Florian, please escort Andreas out of the abbey. Andreas, do not show your face here again until tomorrow. Do you understand me? It's bullshit. Andreas, listen to me. I sympathize with you. I don't think Piero did this either. But this isn't the time to push the abbot. I'm sure that other brothers and sisters believe Piero is innocent as well. Uh, but though Abbot is, but the Abbot is worried about the Prince Bishop's attention. I have to do something. I can't let him die for something he didn't do. I appreciate your passion, but if you pursue this indelicately, you will make matters worse. Take a few hours to calm your nerves and your mind. You will need to think clearly. Go to the Druckers, eat good meal, eat a good meal, and come back. At nones, nones. Uh, Monastic hour corresponding to 3 p.m., one of the little hours of prayer. We won't have much time, but tap on my window with uh, a small stone and I'll let you in. Let me in for what? To examine the body. Hmm. 
two days, two hours remain? Hmm. The flood, Florian mandated dinner. I should follow Florian's advice and go to the Druckers. Hmm. Hopefully it will clear my head. Good day, Andreas. Back from the Abbey already? It's only noon. Andreas, are you alright? I'm not sure. Well, why don't you come inside and sit down for a minute? If it's not in position, I appreciate a moment of rest. Not in position at all. My friends are always welcome in my home. Besides, I could use your opinion on something. I wonder why there's stuff like that. Are these like the stone masons and that's why? Good day, Andrea. Should I fix you a plate? It's not too much trouble. I'm always glad to teach you cooking, Marie. No, I'm sorry. I don't have much of enough. I'm always glad to teach you cooking, Marie. Oh my, class, you must invite Andreas over more often. So I can hear someone compliment my food. Yeah, your cooking is lovely, dear. Darling. Hello. Hello, Bertha. How are you? Sleepy? Come back to my workshop. I'm going to do a new run of Till Espionage. It was printing a few years ago in Strasbourg, but it was awful. Almost bereft of illustrations. What do you think of these new ones? Ooh, look wonderful, excellent work. The figures and composition are terrific. The diagrams are quite dense and busy. Look wonderful, excellent work. Thank you, I'll be sure to let Marie know. Are these her woodcuts? They are, the drawings were mine, but she did the black cuts. I've done enough, I've got enough talent to draw the designs, but only she can do the woodcuts and the type. Bless us, O Lord, and these are gifts, for we are about to receive from your bounty. Through Christ our Lord, Amen. 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 I'm hungry. Amen. Let's be respectful. Andreas, where were the bells for at the Abbey? They were sounding for a long time. The visiting nobleman, Lorenz Rothfogel, was found murdered in a chapter house. God in heaven, he just rode by here yesterday. Yes, and it gets worse. One of the elderly brothers I work with in the Scorpion, Piero was accused of the crime. That's awful, a murder in Kirschlau? How could a monk do such a thing? I'm sorry, Andreas, the Baron seemed like an interesting man. I know he's been a patron of the Abbey for years. How did he die? Could it have been an accident? And does the Abbot really believe that brother Piero killed him? You always spoken of him in the kindest terms. Seems like Lawrence had been stabbed, but I don't know. There's a lot of blood around him. There's a lot of blood, but I'd rather not speculate what happened. I swear, the details, but it's hard to believe what happened to him was natural. But no, I don't believe Piero did it. I can't imagine him harming anyone. Oh, but don't hold back on my account. I've had children and even helped Agnes deliver a few. I'm not squeamish. Yes, blood! But if it wasn't Brother Piero, who do you think could have done it? I did see Lucky Strowner get into a shouting argument with Lorenz yesterday, just before I walked by your place. Lucky? Why would he... Why, why would he have caused a shout at a nobleman? Hmm... Egg pasta, farmer's bread. Ooh, let's eat the farmer's bread. Mm. There's probably something else going on that you wouldn't know about, dear. What do you mean by that? I'm not one to trade gossip, but if you really want to know, talk to some of the other women in town. Or Mother Cecilia up at the Abbey. Could have something to do with the nuns. But would Lucky argue with Lorenz about nuns? Oh, there's no need for that. Lucky is a forthright man. I'm sure if you ask him, he'll tell you what the argument was about. Thank you both. That's good advice. There's something else, though. When Lorenz and I were walking through the meadow, the widow Kemper, Kemperin came out of the woods and... Yep, the old, uh, the old pagan. Yes. Well, she cursed him. 
I'm not surprised. Oh, Atelier's late husband, Ranning, ran afoul of Lorenz on his last visit to Tassing. I don't remember the details, but Ranning died just last year, and Otilia hasn't been the same since. Alright, let's eat some egg pasta. She was, always, she was always an old bitch, even before she was old. Klaus, that's enough. She had to deal with the jobs lot in life with a jobs lot in life and now she lives out alone at the edge of the woods there are rumors she's going to lose her property soon i do pity her even if she is a uh, bitter woman <laughs> there's there should be some ex expectation or uh, exception to the law for her to inherit women are not legally barred from inheriting it all depends on the details of the lease did she come from a wealthy family she did in fact wealthier than ranning anyway if the land that lived on was part of her dowry, she may make a case to lay claim to a property of equal value. Oh well, are you a lawyer, Andreas? Enough about Tilia. Is there anyone else you think might have done it? I don't know if he has any ill intent, but Prior Fenric has been acting strangely since the day Lorenz arrived. Perhaps an aca academic disagreement? I know they're both avid readers, both of classic and new works. On his last visit, the Baron brought a book on astronomy from me. I know the Prior has some similar interests but would a prior kill someone over a simple disagreement it's not that outlandish when i was in university i saw men throw punches over small academic concerns granted i was very drunk at the time but i think that's what the argument was about it was an opinion far uh that what what is an what is an opinion oh for some it's a testament of faith for others and worth killing for well, maybe so but i've never seen that sort of anger at a pr fenric not even when Gernot was made the abbot instead of him. Afterward, he seemed bitter, but never violent. That just doesn't seem the part of his character. So, Lucky the Widow and the Abbey Prior. Anyone else? There was something strange when we approached the Abbey together. Mother Cecilia was outside with some of the sisters. Mother Cecilia scowled and took the nuns inside without saying a word. Sounds like they have a history, at least. Mm, I guess we're going to eat the sausage. I do not know Mother Cecilia personally, but I have never heard anyone speak badly of her. If he had cause to dislike the Baron, I must believe she had a good reason. Well, Andreas, it sounds like there's a lot to look into. Thank you for talking to me. I was feeling overwhelmed. Thank you for your care. It has helped me understand how I can help Piero. You're always welcome here, Andreas. Anytime. Yeah! You're especially welcome with this one. God be with you, Andreas. Thank you. God be with you. I have several leads to follow, but where should I start? I could talk to Lucky Steiner. He's probably working in front of his house. The widow Kempern lives south of here, near Franz Bauer. France. Prior Fenric is usually in a scriptorium, but I won't be able to talk to him until tomorrow. Still, nothing will prevent me from talking to Mother Cecilia in the convent. But if I don't attend Brother Florian's examination of the body at the Abbey, he'll have to do without me. Okay. So, is this one? I wish I could save. Because I don't know, if I choose one, do all the others... I feel like I should go do an inspection of the body first before I go and talk to people, right? So I can... <laughs> I don't really understand how this book is supposed to work. I should probably go do the um <clears throat> like the uh the autopsy first. That seems like get as much information as I can. Ah, come on, looks like it's coming in early. Um 
as much information as I can and then go in asking questions. Going guns blazing. <laughs> Just this way. There you are. I'm glad the storm didn't delay you. Now, even though I gave instructions that I was not to be disturbed, we must work quickly. Seeing a corpse up close can be unsettling for some. I hope you're up to it. I've been through street nights to see a good share of blood. Unless you regularly fight people to the death, it doesn't really compare. That's good to know. Now then, you should probably take notes as we go. They might be of useful later. Ah, of course. Very hung. I'll begin by inspecting his anterior, starting with the face and head. No visible wounds, no blemishes, teeth in good condition, nothing unusual. Next, shoulder, chest are ordinary. I need to cleanse some blood, or clean some blood away to examine the torso. Yes, there it is, puncture wound between the 6th and 7th ribs. It's, fair, it's fairly shallow though, I estimate it penetrated only about an inch, and it likely came from his own hand. Wait, you can... He inflicted it on himself? How can you tell? Well, that doesn't sound deep enough to kill him. And Nuremberg Inch or an Innsbruck Inch? <laughs> what? Nuremberg Inch is no longer. <laughs> Alright, done, Nuremberg Inch. <laughs> that doesn't sound deep enough to... Wait, he inflicted it on himself? How can you tell? From the angle and depth of the strike, it was as though he were holding it in his right hand as he fell on his side. You must know that. I was not always a monk. I was a mercenary f for 10 long years in Poland. My familiarity with wounds comes from my time on the battlefield. I am no true surgeon, but I am close. the closest Kursov has. The wound was shallow. It doesn't sound like it could have been fatal. You must have fought in Moldovia against the Ottomans then. Can't imagine what it must have been like. It wouldn't wish war on anyone, but it did instill me with some knowledge of the ways of life and death. Hopefully it will bring some clarity to the matter at hand. He must have had some other wounds issued forth, uh, forth all the blood we found in him. And surely it mean that brother. And surely this mean must mean that brother Piero is innocent. not really, but it means it's incredibly unlikely that bro, uh, brother Piero stabbed the Baron. But it doesn't explain what actually killed the man. Brother Piero never should have picked up the knife. I'm sure the appearance of guilt never even crossed his mind. Now then, let's move on. Well, there's a sore in there's a sore on his sex, probably from the French disease. I doubt it has anything to do with his murder. Ugh. He had herpes. I'm not, I'm not familiar. What what is this French? What French disease? What? It was first discovered 20 years ago by French soldiers visiting brothels in Naples. Anyway, it seems the Baron was not the most faithful husband. Not uncommon among the nobility. That's not true. Maybe his wife has it. say nothing moving down other than a few blisters on his feet from what i assume are new shoes there's nothing wrong with his legs andreas can you help me turn him over of course oh look that was a nice little animation I love the art. Again, I love the art style. This is really great. There's a slight irregularity in his spine, possibly from an old injury. I don't think it has anything to do with how he died, though. How could that have happened? I have no idea. Whatever reason, it doesn't contribute to his death. Here it is. A rather dramatic head wound. Ooh, in the back of the head. The dark hair and the blood make it difficult to see, but it's quite bad. In my experience, I've never seen someone walk away from a head wound of this severity. Say nothing. The wound looks like it was caused by a single powerful blow from a blunt object, probably no more than four or five inches across. Can you tell? The skull's cracked in a single spot, and there's a clear impression in the skin around it. It would take extraordinary precision to hit the same spot twice unless the 
Um, unless the Baron were dead. It's likely he didn't die immediately. How long could he have survived for? I've seen similar injuries in battle. The victims don't last more than a few minutes, but it's an agonizing death. Even so, he couldn't have wandered far from where the blow was first struck. So he may not have been attacked in the chapter house? There was blood up on the wall I saw going in. He was either attacked in the chapter house or someplace in the immediate area. Hmm. Is the church a possibility? I can't imagine it. Rudiger and Matteo are in and out of there constantly. Rudiger. Noise in the church is easy to hear, and the Baron would have to go through the cloister to wind up in the chapter house. Anyway, whatever killed the Baron was a blunt instrument of considerable health. The part that impacted him was likely a sm lot, little smaller than a fist. I'd have two and a half inches. I'd say two and a half. Whoever did that got to jump on it. This way to do it. Blow in the head. Unaware. I'd say two and a half inches around. Perhaps a pig mallet, a joining hammer, or even a round stone four or five inches across held in the hand. That's specific. As so many size distance numbers have always come easy to me. Hopefully your talents will help you find the murder weapon in shorter order. Whoever did this must have caught the Baron unaware. Save the small knife wound, he has no other injuries. <clears throat> I suppose that he was struck, drew his knife to defend himself, fell on it before Brother Piero discovered him. So I believe we have discovered two important things. Piero didn't stab the Baron, even if he had it was killed. The Baron was killed by a blow to the head from a heavy blunt object. Yes, exactly. If you can find what caused the blow, it may lead to the, you to the killer. You also know that Piero didn't stab the Baron. We know that, and I suspect even the Abbot knows that, but you may need more evidence to convince the Archdeacon. Archdeacon. Oh, there's one other item of interest. I found it in the Baron's jacket, but didn't want to open it without you. A note of some kind. I trust you open it more carefully than I would. What does it say? It's German. The girl, the girl who died in the innocent with her Matins chapter. The girl, the girl who died in the innocent with her Matins chapter. The girl, what girl and what innocent? One of the nuns summoned from the village, I guess as good as mine. Unfortunately, I don't have much faith in my guesses. Can you tell who wrote it? Uh, they're not Italian. I can tell you that Italian scripts is humanist script. This is highly refined Gothic hand. As good as Eidic and Guy are, I don't think they could re replicate this. What? Really? If not them, who? I intend to find out. I wish you good luck finding the answer. Now, I'm sorry to rush you, but I must, must ask you to leave. Every minute you stay here is additional... Oh, shit. Were you expecting someone? Look at Florian. Where you open up is Warner Stolz, the, phys the physician from Tassing. Yes, uh, I'm in the middle of something. Could you return after supper? I'm afraid I can't wait, Father. You're not asking me to examine the Baron's body. All right, just give me a moment. Joyce, I need you to hide yourself course let's do what he says don't don't argue let's do it it's uh that's definitely a spot to hide in ah uh, dr stoll sorry to keep you waiting now what do you need they have wanted me to examine the baron's body before his wife leave arrives it seems unnecessary at this point as i've just completed my own examination well then what's the harm in letting me take a leak a look uh, Dr. Scholes, with all respect, I finished. The cause of death is clear. If you ever arrived an hour ago, I would have no problem with your assistance. Assistance? I'm a university-trained physician. I can examine a corpse on my own without the help of a battlefield sawbones. No, no, no. Remain hidden. Regardless of your opinions regarding my abilities, the examination is finished. If you insist on inspecting the body anyway, I must insist that the abbot tells me himself. What? Making me bring the abbot here is a waste of time. 
So I was performing an examination on this corpse immediately after one was just completed. Idiotic. I'll return with Father Gara pres presently. That's right. Get the fuck out of here. This is my house. My house. That was close. Now quickly, leave through the cloister before they return. Of course, thank you, Brother Florian. Think nothing of it. I'll see you tomorrow. Until then. One day, 19 hours remain. I wonder what that's about. Oh, until maybe they come, the, the Arc Deacon. I should find someone to eat with. I should find someone to eat with. I can't get that note out of my head. The girl who died in the is sent with her. What could it mean, and who wrote it? Okay. Some interesting suggestions there. Let's see, is anybody in the guest Oh, yep, somebody's in the guest house. Aw. Fortune. Pet little fortune. Is this a letter to the Baron from PR PR Frenick? My God, Lorenz was blackmailing Frenick to give him to perform some kind of occult ritual. Huh. It's one thing to read books on magic, but if you are foolish enough to attempt to actually practice what is written on them, some of the substances used in these rituals are dangerous, even lethal. And God forbid someone in the Inquisition finds out about it. Interesting. Let's talk to Lady Salmia. Hello. Hello. Mm. Uh, Master Mailer, would you care to share supper at my table? I would like to talk to you about my late husband. She is already like, boom, 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 moving, eh? Of course, please, lead the way. Thank you. Please sit. Bless us, O oh Lord, and these are gifts which we are about to receive from your bounty. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Amen. I find myself rather out of place here without the comfort of the Baron. Thank you for agreeing to share a meal with me, Master Mailer. Of course, the honor is mine. You must have been staying nearby to arrive here so quick. You are an observant man, Master Mailer. Indeed, I was staying in Innsbruck while my husband visited the Abbey. It's like food item to eat. What do we got? We got quail, we got emmental cheese and wheat bread, we got frumenti. Man, this is all like frou frou food, eh? Now let's, let's eat some of this frumenti. We've meant to take a tour of the Alpine towns before returning to our house in Worms, but, well, return we shall. But now, as you hoped? No, certainly not. It is only by Christ's grace that I will see this through. Though, Lorenz has given me my fair share of troubles in the years of our marriage. I never would have wished such an end for him, for anyone. I pray his immortal soul has found the peace in death that so eluded him in life. Are you married yourself, Master Mailer? No one waits for me in Nuremberg when I finish my work. No, in truth be told, I'm not looking forward to the prospect. Um, a woman waits for me in Nuremberg. When I finish my work here, we will be at red. Do you not look forward to the responsibilities of marriage, Master Mailer? Perhaps it's no surprise to you, Lorenz became fast. No surprise you and Lorenz became fast friends. I imagine he saw something of himself in you. Oh, my. He even gave you one of his pins. He must have been quite fond of you. You mean to say you knew of his excursions? Master Mailer, very little of a husband is mysterious to his wife, no matter what he may fool himself into believing. Lorenz was a flawed man. His various infidelities were no secret to me. We are, uh, but we, uh, but are we not all flawed before Christ? <laughs> See this wheat bread and, uh, cheese. I loved him as a wife should properly love her husband. 
But I should not say that we were friends. I only hope his appetites were not what led him to this end. I've been searching for the answer to that quandary myself. Were you and Lauren so close that you had would trouble yourself so? Uh, I merely wish to suggest to serve. I fear the abbot and the archbishop were led to an accurate conclusion by circumstantial evidence. My mentor, Brother Piero, was found with the brand's body bound and devoid of him, but the situation more complex than appears. But the situation is more complex than it appears. I'm afraid I can't say no more than that. I see. Well, I suppose it shouldn't be surprised. It shouldn't surprise me that my husband made his share of enemies. He was a man of many opinions, and he gave them freely to all who would listen and some who would not. The previous abbey, Father Mateus, seemed to appreciate that about him. This new abbey is perhaps more conservative. Father Mateus was an open-minded man, from all I've heard, a true scholar. Father Gernot Ger Ger doesn't share Mateus' passion for the written word, yet endures the expense of it. To be put in such a position wouldn't make any man unhappy, I understand. I wonder what he will make of Lawrence's gift to the Abbey. What gift was this? It seemed to be a little thing of more interest and value to my husband and the former abbot than Father Gernot. Well. He had found a book about the history of Tassin. He believed it contained some scandalous details. He said it corroborated fears Father Mateus had expressed, but he didn't share the particulars with me. Do you have any sense what the scandals involved? Beyond the breadbasket of Tassin's history, I cannot say. My understanding is that this community is quite old. I'm sorry I can't be of more help. I have some education, but I lack my husband's thirst for knowledge. If you find the book, hopefully its significance will be apparent. Nod solemnly. Do you plan on staying long? Do you, do you plan on staying in Tassin long? Only so long as it takes the Archdeacon to investigate my husband's murder. Though the circumstances of my time here are dire, I am in no hurry to return. Why is that if I may ask? I shouldn't. <laughs> I see a glimmer now of what Lorenz saw in you. You are a, a disarming man, Master Whaler, and much too easy to talk to. To be frank, I do not know what will become of me when I return to Worms. My title and residence may be in jeopardy. Lorenz and I have a son, but he is young yet. I don't know many of the legalities, only that my position is in some risk. Would you like me to eludicate them for you? I studied Imperial Law at Erfurt. Ah, thank you, but no, I fear it will only heighten my unease. I'm sorry to cut our conversation short, but I fear I must rest. Thank you for having me. Of course, you've had a long day. Of course, you've had a long day. With many yet to come, I fear. Be well, Master Mailer. And whatever anyone says of my husband, I am certain he appreciated your friendship. Hmm. Interesting. Did she has some sleep or break into the library? Okay, I guess, yeah. I guess those are my two options. Get some sleep, break into the library. Alright, let's go break into the library. I mean, what's the option? Like, should we go to sleep or break into the library? Yeah, let's let's break into the library. I think that's probably the right answer. Okay, we shouldn't walk around because we shouldn't get caught here, right? So, let's go to the cloister. The church is... Oh, wait, we have to go to the church, then, don't we? Uh, yeah, I think so. Fuck. Because I think the church is where the... um. The crypt is the crypt. Males. Uh oh. Oh shit, Matthias and Abby's is the Abby's cir uh circator? Circator? Monk responsible for making rounds in the Abbey to make certain everyone is where they're supposed to be doing what they're supposed to do. If he sees me, he'll kick me out. I have to keep out of sight until he passes. Good thing he can't see well. <laughs> a little silly. All right, go, 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 go. Go to the crypt. Okay. 
I love how it's still down. If I go up these stairs, it's gonna take a while to find the records I need. I'll lose some time tomorrow morning unless I'm unless I turn back now. Let's go. Let's go. The Baron of the Nun. Search the Nun's records. Read. What's this? <clears throat> the Herbis Cambrari. One of the herbs of Wales. The writer is Cadphilius Uf Sepulia. I don't believe I've heard of him. Mugwort and Butcher's Broom. I'm not familiar with their properties, but they sound extraordinary. A beautiful illustrated book, and the author appears to be speaking from his own personal experiences. A wonderful hidden treasure for the Abbey. Hmm. I wonder if any of those are like poisonous or something, you know? What do we have here? A bifolium taken from a larger text, the Mysteria Astra? I'm not familiar with it. Some sort of astronomical text. Seems rudimentary explaining the connection between astrological signs and the elements and their basic relationships to alchemy. We need this. Yes, there we go. Each sign is governed by one of the four elements. Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces are the water signs. Scorpio, Taurus, Virgo are the earth signs and so on. It cuts off there. The next page is about something else entirely. Sister Illuminate must be trying to reconstruct the larger text. Given the dramatic different context of the following page, the query choir this bifolium came from must have been assembled improperly. Hmm. These two pages were interesting enough, I suppose, but quite basic. Wait, that's the connection between that's the connection between the astrological symbols on Fenix cipher and the elemental symbols in the Volov. Volvel. If I turn the wheel to the element that matches the sign, I can decipher the note he left. Excellent. Hopefully I wrote that down somewhere. Read. This is most curious. Historia de Labyrinthio Laborium. Account of the Labyrinth of Books. Hmm, I wonder what secret text could be hidden in that place. That must be metaphorical. You don't... You'd need an extraordinary amount of books to actually build a labyrinth. I believe a Bolognese professor told me a tale about such a place in Piedmont. It appears to be quite complicated. Oh, I wonder what secret text could be hidden in such a place. I'll have to see if I can borrow the book when I have some free time, if Illuminata allows it. Oops, I know who Illuminata is. Anyways, yeah, I hope you wrote that down, because fuck. Yeah, this is a big one. This is a big one. Is this the last page, though? Or last one? Yep, this is the last one. This looks promising. The familiars, familiars, familiars of the Sisters of Krishna Abbey. Yes. Ooh. Alright. Sora Cecilia. Sister Cecilia. Oh, this is Mother Cecilia's record. Wait, she's from the Welser, Welser family? They're one of the most powerful families in Augsburg. It looks like her family donates a lot of money to Kirsoff every year, more than my family season 10. What about Illuminata? Oh, this should be interesting. Sister Illuminata. Named Angeline from the Capocci family in Paragia. It looks like they have some connection to uh, Kirsoff through an old abbot, Rudolph. Her family donates money to the abbey every year as well. Hmm. Matilda... Matilda Oblet, yes, the nun's cellar. She came from Kempton. Merchant family, they donated pigments to use in the scriptorium. Quite thoughtful. I'll have to thank them if I ever get the chance. <laughs> Mother Catherine was the first to enter records. It looks like almost 50 years ago. Sister Hildegard from the Goldrich family in Ravensburg, quite wealthy. She looks like she became the prioress after Mother Catherine. Sister Gertrude from Hoff, the herbalist, yes. Her father is an apothecary, that explains it. Alright, I don't think there's anything else here to read. The hand turns red when, when you hover over something. Okay. Ooh, see, like this. 
And I think that's it on this page, so let's read this. Hmm, this note says Sister Mathilda left the Abbey for several months. Why would she go to a, why would she go on a herm, hermitage? Seems strange that she's the only entry with such a note. To date three years ago, this the dates three years ago, the the this Oz no, this was just before Ma, Father Matilda's died. Or Matthias. Which means it was around the time Baron Rothvogel visited. I should ask Sister Matilda about this. Maybe Mother Cecilia as well. Hmm. Very strange. Maybe she left with him. Something happened, then she came back. Sorry, Sophia. Sophie from uh, Brigitte's. Her family is poor, but they donate flour. Ah, Lisbeth Oblate. She's from Utrecht. Utrecht. Looks like she had an eventful life before coming here. Married with the child, both died. Her merchant family has some connections uh, to Kirchhoff through the Kaufmans of Rothenburg of Oder Tabar. <clears throat> Sister Marguerite. Oh, the blind girl who's Sister Gertrude. She went blind because of failed surgery on her cataracts. Cataracts. Uh, wealthy peasant, wealthy peasant family. They donated wool and a pasture in Kreml. Sister Zedna, this should be good. <laughs> they donate a fortune to the Abbey. No wonder Mother Cecilia and the Abbot let her behave as she does. <laughs> She's the um, the horny one. <laughs> okay, interesting. Talk to the Cecilia or Matilda. Okay, I think that's it then. Alright. Uh oh. In the wood. <gasps> Shit, they're gay. I'll break for the stairs. They can't possibly. Can. If I talk to them, they won't. So I'll come. All right, I just need to wait for. Uh, what am I gonna do? Just wait for them to finish, then leave. It won't take that long, can it? You should speak with them openly in good faith. As a matter of reason, run for it. Go, go, go. Oh no. I'll notice, but can they catch me? How fast can two monks run? I just need to wait for Rudger and Matteo to leave. Just a little patience. I don't. I feel like my character doesn't have a lot of patience. So we're gonna go, and I'll try to make. They can't possibly catch me. What's that noise. I need to get out of here. Go 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 go. Hurry, right, Andreas. Wow, they are very fast. The most exciting chase scene in all of media. Too close, too close. We gotta get past the gates. They can't go past the gates. The monks are internally locked in this place. Woo! Ow. I made it. Could they tell it was me? Christ, my leg. Oh. Yep, now we got a limp. I guess the limp's gone already. Hmm. This seems like that would be bad, but we have dirt on them. So if they're going to try to use that against me, we could always try to hold that against... Uh oh. Andrea! 
Good morning. Stare at the child. Stare at the. Good morning. Oh, it's not morning. Stare at this child. <laughs> it's the middle of the night, Ursula. What are you doing? How did you get out of bed? So stop. The I see. <laughs> Would you like me to tell you a story? Would that help you sleep? <clears throat> mm -mm. There once was a little girl about your age who was sold with a basket of oranges. <clears throat> A man had to pay rent to the king every year. The cost was four baskets of so orange. This was in Italy, of course. You don't even know what an orange is. <clears throat> anyway, the man's young daughter had hair the same color as yours, same as an orange. And the man didn't have enough oranges to pay the rent, so he put his daughter in the fourth basket. He covered her with oranges and sent the baskets to the king. <clears throat> when the king's servants found the little girl, the king told them to raise her as a servant. They called her uh, Aranceta, like a little orange. You don't know Italian, so it doesn't mean anything to you, but it's very cute. <clears throat> anyway, the little girl grew older. The king's son, the prince, fell in love with her. But the other servants were jealous, and they gave her three imp... <laughs> anyway, they were all very happy together. <laughs> <clears throat> Ooh, we are sleeping in. God damn. Dude, just wake up tired. Let me find somebody to eat with. Yeah. Right. Near the top of the library, I found a record of admission of nuns. There was a note uh, about the sister Matilda staying out of hemorrhage for several months after Baron Rothsvogel last visit. Yeah. I think she works in the common garden during the day. Can't just be a coincidence. So Brandon Bally argument erupted between the Baron. Okay, I'm just kind of reading this stuff. So we got a couple of people we can talk to still. <clears throat> Clara. Hello, Andreas. It's nice to see you out and about. Morning, Clara. Keeping busy? Always. If it's not washing, it's the cooking, the, min the mending, the tidying. Uh, I'll lose my mind if I could count it all. That's before we got to the wool. Oh, goodness. All that wool. Wool? We sired the ears last week to prepare for lambing. You remember the bleating, I'm sure. How could you forget? My ears are still ringing. Now the wool's all washed and we've got a pile of spinning to get through before the lambs are born. Uh, uh, where will we find the time? <clears throat> who does uh, this sounds like, uh, who does the spinning? You? Goodness, no. It's too much work for one woman to bear. All the women pitch in. Many hands make light work, eh? Even baby Ursula? Oh, we give her a little wool to play with, but she's too young yet. Not for too much longer, though. My mother taught me to spin when I was still in soft shoes. I never had much of a hand for spinning, so I enjoy the company more than the work. It's rare so many women in town are in the same room together. We share recipes, stories, hardships, friendships, you know. <clears throat> and maybe a little bit of gossip, too. You almost know a lot about the going on in Tassin. <clears throat> we know some, it's true. But Joanne Bauer is there to watch over us. Johan. Johan Bayer is there too. So things can't get too rowdy. Oh, Andreas, you should come by. I'd like that. Thank you. Everyone will be glad to see you, I'm sure. We meet Johan Bayer. We meet at Johan Bayer's house. Please come by the morning or afternoon and speak to Johan. I should get back to my labors, but it was lovely to see you, Andreas. Take care. Be well, Clara. Oh, and Andreas, I meant to ask, would you come join us for a meal? I'd love to. Thank you. Wonderful. Yeah, let's just see here. Bless us, O Lord, and these your gifts, which we are about to receive from your bounty. And we pray that you keep safe the soul of my dear Christine, gone these six years. She is missed at this table by her husband and children, but we take comfort that she will be with you in paradise. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Amen, 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 amen. All right. I saw that wretch of a miller this morning. 
The bastard had the gall to raise his hand to me and greet him. I should have spat at his feet. Dad. I don't know how we're going to pay the Abbey's taxes if he raises the milling fee. Maybe you could work on an arrangement that benefits you both. No use talking to that man. Not with the bad, bad blood between us. I could try to speak to him. He's friendly with me. Absolutely not. <laughs> and don't you ever speak of him again. Oh, how'd... Ever! I'm sorry, Dad. I won't. I promise. You're going to give yourself chest pains again if you keep going on like that. It's not my chest pains. It's not my chest that pains me, boy. Christ, but my back hurts. How are we going to get those fields planted in time? I've been picking the slack, haven't I? We'll get by all right. Is farm work so hard on the body? Christ, don't get him started. You're damned right it's hard. Up with the sun, no matter the weather. Out there in the muck and elements, working my hands to goddamn splinters. Watch your heart, son. You want to leave Clara a widow. All right, what do we got? From? We got rye bread and some fresh porridge. All right, let's eat one of our rye breads. Why don't you see Agnes uh, Stainurium about the bomb on your back? I don't want goddamn woman's medicine. Dad, we have guests. We have a guest. If Agnes' medicine is good enough for me and Claire, I don't see why I can't help you too. Agnes once gave me a tincture for upset stomach and it was quite helpful. If it's Agnes you got a problem with, Dad, why don't you see Dr. Stoltz instead? Stoltz is even worse, charging you as much as the miller with all the kindness of the horsemen of the plague. The pain will pass. I'll push through, just as I always have. Stubborn boy, why don't you talk to that old soldier up in the abbey? Uh, what was his name? Florian? Florian, Florian, yes, it was the tip of my tongue. Since when are you so fond of an abbey, Peter? Or abbot, Peter. Florian might live in the abbey, but he's a soldier still. One of them, one of, only one of them worth talking to now that Father Mateus has passed. When was that, huh? A few months ago? 35, four or 35 months ago, I believe. Oh, young minds, a couple of years, a couple of months, you get my age, there's no difference anymore. Mateus, you know, he was impressed by my age. Thought I must have been blessed by the Lord. We ate the porridge. I wanted to know all my life. Uh, he wanted to know all about my life and the things I'd seen. Good man for a monk. Not like that new abbot. Only cares about his coffers. Gurnot does. That's the abbey for you. Do you see Otto up, uh, up there much, Andreas? The abbot keeps him busy. I had dinner with him and uh, Andreas recently. That reminds me. Otto told me to say hi to you, Eva. He was working on some repairs in the abbot's house. He was working on some rep eh? he was working on some repairs. Did uh did anyone or did I, did uh did anyone at Abby have a hello for me? George. What Clara? I'm only curious. I know George. Uh start quizzically up. <laughs> start quizzically. Forget it. It was stupid anyways. Alright, let's eat this last rye bread. We don't often get meals with you, Andreas. I string folks around town with questions like you do. You want to know anything about the? You want to know anything about the town? Do you ever have any encounters with the Baron? What's the story of Martin? The widow who lives in her forest. Was she always like that? Kemper and, and shame what happened to her. She was never a sweet woman, you know. Even as a girl, she was Shirley. Though that has its, though that has its charms. <laughs> Dad, I won't have Andrea going around telling tales of your lechery. Nonsense. I can keep a secret. I have plenty of my own. <laughs> And no doubt, strapping young rascal like you. Attilia, she and I have known each other all our lives. Her family has been on that land for generations, going back to oh, her great-grandfather, I think, Daedrich. Her husband passed away not too long ago. What was his name? Ranning. He was unwell for a long time, wasn't he? He seemed to be worse every time I saw him. I had a run-in with that rough vocal bastard he did. An argument over land or hunting, I don't know. Ronan was a good man, but he had a temper. No one could tell him no. Not even a baron. It didn't matter. Ralph Regal, he beat Ranig so badly he could never walk right again. Probably what killed him in the end. Fucking nobles. Fucking nobles. <laughs> man. All this shouting is making Ursula restless. Let's finish our meal in peace. <laughs> All right. Sorry, Ursula. <laughs> hmm. 
the spinning bee. Attend the bee. Time to get back to work. I hope we see you spinning. See you this. Hope we see you the spinning bee. Okay. How's Eva doing? It'll be fun to have you spinning with us, Andreas. Mm. All right. Let's step outside. No. Hey, Andres. Andreas. All right. So we have a couple of things we can do. We got to question some people. While eating with the guy, Peter told me that his husband was like, I had a run with the Baron. Andreas ran about. Peter believes it may have resulted in his death. Baron's man has departed. Okay. He'll be gathering. Right. I should talk with Lucky to find out what he was arguing about with the Baron. Okay, so Lucky, we gotta go talk to the Widow. Can't figure out what the connection between the astrological moments are. If I can find a way into the library after dark. Okay, so we did find that. We need to do that. Use the little sp the thing, the 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 cipher. Um, I found a letter in Baron's letters from Prior Fennec, and it Fennec said that he had not performed a ritual for the Baron, even if the Baron threatened to turn him into an Inquisitor, into Inquisitors in Innsbruck. The Baron and the Nun, I decided to risk entering the library. On the top library, I found a record of admissions. There was a note saying that, okay. We could ask to talk to Sister Matilda. Uh -huh. I think she works in the convert garden during the day. Okay. So we have a couple of um, options here. Let's go talk to Lucky, I guess, right? What time is it? It's two hours? Okay. All right, the game is saved. Let's see. Let's get us into position to talk to Lucky. All right, hold on. Hello, Andreas. Let's talk to Otto. Hey, Andreas. It's a room in the house. I think uh, Lucky is up north here. We gotta go up. Andreas, something you need? How are you doing, Lucky? We don't talk much. Andreas, I have things to do. Father Thomas needs me to help out at the church. After that, I'm going to fishing with old Otto. Yeah, the fisher guy. So if you don't need me to repair a wall or a fallen chimney, then leave me be. I can see you're busy, so I'll keep it brief. I was hoping... I, I hoped... I had hoped to ask you a few questions about Baron Rothvogel. No. Why not? I don't want to. You are a grown man. That should be reason enough for you. I saw you shouting at the Baron when he arrived at Tessing. What was that about? Get it through your pebble-stuffed head. I'm not talking about Earl Vogel. If you have no part in his death, you should mind answering a few simple questions about him. You think I'm stupid? You're twisting my words around already. Maybe you'll try to see me killed with them. Talk about him makes you angry, and you don't strike me as a man quick to anger. Look, he told me he didn't want to talk about Lorenz. But it's clear they argued over something important, or, or Lucky wouldn't be so hostile. Lucky is known to be an honest man. Maybe I can push him a little more. He doesn't seem like type to hold a grudge, right? Though I don't suppose he'll take kindly to me suggesting he's a murderer. You don't strike him as a man quick to anger. That's because I'm very angry with him, and now he's dead, so I'm not... I'm not celebrating the Baron's death, Andreas, but I'm not all that sad about it. And that's all I'll say to you about it. Good day. He's not being forthright with me, and he seems eager to get away. By the way, here, maybe he'll leave and I can observe his actions. If I should do that now, it'll probably take a while. Uh, let's... Let's... 
Let's do it later when he's not suspecting it. Let's go talk. We got some other people to talk to anyways, so it's not that big a deal. Agnes. Hello, Andreas. Hello, Agnes. <clears throat> North Town. What's up here? Oh, somebody. Werner. Hello, you're the uh, artist from Nuremberg. Andreas Mahler, German artist at your service. Ah, that was it. Mahler, someone mentioned you dabbled at university for a year or two. Funny, you're staying with the Gertners, yes? The Abbey does have a guest house, you know. I understand town. Uh, the Gertners are good and gracious people. For farmers. Tassing is full of miserable, miserable people like them. What are you doing here, then? Everyone's been kind enough to me. What's your problem with the farmers? You seem to be hardworking and honest. They seem like... What are you doing here, then? Building up my contacts. People of merit do pass through here occasionally. Unlike, unlikely, though, it may seem. Your justification is a little thin, Werner. Dr. Stoles. What? You will call me Dr. Stoles. And I don't need you to approve of my circumstances, Maller. Fortunately, I do not intend to stay in testing long. I'm sure the town's people will be heartbroken to see you go. They have the town they have the town midwife, an old nun, and a crippled sawbones to look after them. No more skilled hands could testing expect, nor deserve. I recommend you don't linger here either, Maller. Or you'll find yourself trapped in a marriage to a mouse faced girl with dirt under her nails. Alas, I already a dealer is for you, I'm sure. I'm a successful, educated Dr. Mallor. I can't be too careful. In any case, I must ask you to go. I have plenty of work to do. Good day. It's been a pleasure, I suppose. Likewise. Now, goodbye. That guy sucks. Stolch house is locked up, and that's it. Okay. Hello, Marie. Andreas, what brings you to the shop? Can I fix you something? You know, I love your cooking, Marie, but perhaps another time. Don't keep me waiting, Andreas, until later. Until then. Okay, so I can come here to eat. Be with you, okay. We could go down here and talk to the widow. <laughs> Hello, Master Mailer. I'm sorry to cause you trouble, but have you seen Martin recently? He wasn't feeling well, so I let him sleep until prime. On a sec, hour during the first hour of daylight, one of the little hours of prayer. But when I came to check on him, he was gone. I see Martin running through the meadow, but... This is a delicate situation. I'm not sure how I should handle it. I didn't get a chance to speak with him, and I don't know what he was up to. The boy's clearly troubled people in town do not think... It could be entirely innocent, but I felt cat that I tell him if we... If I tell, uh, she might think her son killed Ryan. She might think... She might think I think her son... Oh... This could cause her undue stress. I don't want to get involved in their problems. It probably wasn't even Martin who did it. Even if it was Martin who killed her I don't know where he's gone now anyway. He doesn't strike me as a murderer in type. Still can't his room now. Damn, I wish I'd never seen him. Doesn't strike. Still can't. Damn, I wish I'd never seen him. Um. Sorry, I haven't seen him. Why do you ask? He has a history of making poor decisions. What do you mean? He steals things. Bread from the Albans, egg from the Joins, and Peter's Farms. A pilgrim satchel once on the road in the Abbey. It's my great shame. I failed him as a mother. I'm sorry, this is not your trouble. Thank you for speaking to me. Is there some, was there any something else? I don't want to impose, but it wouldn't be too much trouble. Please let me know if you see Martin. I'm so worried for him. Of course. Thank you, Mr. Mailer. Be well. 
Br Brigitta, Brigitta. I would wish you a good day, Andreas, but I fear that would be a lie. A Baron Rothwell was murdered at the Abbey, have you heard? Has something happened? Martin's gone missing. Kaz besides yourself. So I'm fleeing the Abbey Thursday morning right after it was murdered, but not you. I'm sorry to hear it. Do you know where he's gone? But not you? I'm very worried for him, but it's not the first time he's run off. He said he wasn't feeling well this morning. I just know he had another scheme planned. I'm sure I'm sure his mother knows where he is. He speaks more to her than she does to me, even though I am his wife. I'm sorry, they've always been close. They've had to be. Twinder, well, Twinder, France. How did you know? You haven't said a word about him. That absence is telling in its own way. This is a difficult man, and very hard on Martin. It made him difficult, too. So difficult that he commit a murder? No, no, there's there's a storm cloud over Martin, but it rains only on him. He would never hurt someone. I can't imagine it. What are you talking about? Lie, it's nothing. An idle question. I'm sorry to have disturbed you. I should probably get back to my chores. Friends will be angry if he sees me shirking or talking to an unmarried man. Of course, God willing, Martin will come home soon. Until later, then. Be well, Andreas. Be well, Brigitte. <laughs> hey, Mallor, you see my son? Uh, not today. Has something happened to Martin? Nothing but good. Nothing a good boxer on his ears won't fix. If you see him, will you tell his mother? She's driving me crazy about it. I'll let kind of know if I run into him. Good. Until later, Mala. Until then. Lots of chickens. Alright. Let's see what Atilia has to say for herself. Well, if it isn't the late Baron's new best friend. Uh, afternoon, I'm glad to find you in such a good mood. Ha! Huh, city boy, think you're so clever. What do you want? You must be bothering me for something. I want to ask you some questions about Lawrence Ruffalo. Not the first time Perchetta answered my call. You want to know what I think? I'm glad he's dead. I hope whoever killed him gets the abbot next. Maybe burns the entire abbey to the ground. And that's all I have to say about it. I already know what happened or has the abbot crashed it somehow. I find this is a man's mistake. A few older brothers can't spare a few minutes. Has the abbot crossed it somehow? What did I just tell you, boy? I don't have anything else to say on the matter. The life of an innocent man is at stake. One of the elder brothers. Can't you, elder brothers, can't you spare a few minutes? You think I care about what happens to some old monk? Pfft. Idiot. Kill them all. I see if I care. Every agent of the church should die. When you're done with the church, why don't you storm the gates of heaven and murder the Lord on his throne? That'll show him, the holy bastard. Don't you make fun of me, boy. Where's this anger from? Something I can help with? No. Well, maybe. Don't suppose those skinny arms of yours could hold more than a paintbrush. I'm not strong as Otto, but I can lift things and reach high places if that's what you need. Not often someone offers to help at an old Atelier. Fine, you do some things for me, maybe it'll jog my memory. But it's going to take a while. Lots of things have been building up. Things I'm too old to do. You got some place to be? I have no other plans. I'm all yours for the afternoon. Follow me, then. Been needing to collect some firewood, but I haven't been able to muster the energy. Do you often have a difficult time gathering wood? I'm an old woman. Everything's difficult, and no one's around to help me. Not since my husband died. I'll stop yammering and get to work. The light on this won't last forever. One stick. One. Don't leave any branches. I'm going to need every last one to stave off the cold in these trying times. Oh, please, let this animation be any longer. <laughs> See what else we got. We got a stick right here. <clears throat> there, there are the trees Otto's been felling for the abbot. Break off that branch there, the big one. Okay, that's technically poaching. These shoes belong to have it. 
Uh, I know it too. I know it, I tell you, I feel she's been wrong by the Abbey, but the wood still does belong to the Abbey. If we were caught stealing it, my investigation into Land's murder could be in jeopardy. If the Abbey finds out I helped others steal from it, he can make finishing my masterpiece difficult. If I refuse to help her today, she might not tell me what happened between her and Lance to make her hate him so. The way she yelled at him the day he arrived, it must have been serious, but serious enough to kill him? Perhaps I can make her see reason. Secondly, Pochino, it's wrong. You think the Abbey doesn't steal from us? The people of Tessing were here before the Abbey was. This forest is ours. Just because some piece of paper somewhere says the land belongs to the church, we can't use it. The people who care for it. Okay, sorry, I'll get the branch. What would I be do to make you hate them so? But they're in a fire order. I'm not about to get in trouble. Okay. What would I be do to make you so hate them so? I know the church has this discontents, but you deserve more you deserve more rage than boast. You <laughs> no one's ever asked to hear my side of things. Well, I'm not in the mood to talk about it, so you'll just have to mind your business. Leave the branch. We've got enough wood. I think that's a positive. I think she liked that we asked her. I hope. Oh, we're just gonna dump them right here. Alright, bitch, pick them up and take them home. I can't use all these sticks. They're too big. You need to break them down for me. For a common lady, you certainly have a mane of a noble one. What was that? Sure, break the sticks. Got it. <laughs> I need the right side at a certain length, so break them and forget the leftover scrap. Or should I break them? I'll know it when I see it. Now get snapping, boy. Oh, yeah. Oh. 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 Uh, Alright, what about this? It's too big. You're not listening at all. Okay. I need those smaller so they fit in my hearth, Andreas. This one's too big. I don't need a club, you buffoon. This one's too small and frail, just like you, Mahler. More than that, Andreas. Mahler, bigger. I suppose that one's fine. That one should do nicely. I need these smaller so they fit in my hearth. Okay. It's too big. You're not listening. None of these are the right size. I guess if I freeze to death tonight, I guess I'll freeze to death tonight. Or come help me back at the house. Are you sure this will be enough wood? What if there's a cold snap? Perhaps we should get more. It will have to be one, unless you mean to come by around again. I'm an old woman living alone, and summer's coming. Soon I'll only need fuel for cooking, not warm. Don't worry yourself. Boy, I'll be fine. So, so, but I worry about you living alone. So. <laughs> I have some mentos from raining here. They're gone crooked and I can't reach. Could you hang them for me, Andreas? Easy. And please be careful with my pictures. Some are very fragile. I would hate to lose them to your carelessness. Nice and slow. Nice and slow. I don't know if it matters, so we're going to go slow. could hang those papers on the table. I can't reach. There you go. That looks all right. Thank you for hanging those. Just one thing. Remove the cross. Are you sure about that? Don't you gainsay me, boy? I guess if you're sure. I was asking me a sacrilegious. I don't really care though. You should be forced to face the church inquisitor if someone found out. I might simply, might well simply for aiding her. It's a worn old cross and grace the home she shared with her husband. If I destroy, she might regret it later. I would not speak well for my character or until when the archdeacon comes to cure the kiss against Piero. I will help Piero if my reputation is poor, but if I anger her, I might miss out on the information. 
Perhaps I can convince her to put it somewhere out of sight, but won't torment her. That might be enough. What do you plan on doing with the cross? Destroy it, of course. The church never did anything for me and took nearly all I had. Why should I be made to venerate it? What did the church take from you? What does it matter to you? Just take the thing down like I asked. Perhaps if I can move the cross to where you can, can't see it. I understand that you're angry and hurting now, but you might regret destroying it later. Uh, it's such a nice cross. Made from nice wood. Okay. Show ki special kindness and concerned effort. Oh. I don't give a shit what it's made from. If you don't remove cross, then you're useless to me. Okay. Damn it. What if we sweep? This must be Rainig's cane. Strong, sturdy, and here the head has broken off. The break looks recent. Could Tilia have used this cane to kill Lorenz? Tilia, your husband's cane is broken. Do you remember how it happened? How should I know? Everything in here is broken and falling apart. The head broke off at some point. I don't remember how. Bah. Hmm. I got one last thing for you to do, if you're willing. A legal document. I need you to read it. The words are too small for my old eyes, and my reading's not so good. Nothing would delight me more. Hmm. Oh, that I have no doubts. Let's see here. It says, oh. Due to the recent death in Reign of Kemper, his lack of heirs to inherit, your inability to pay fees on the land, your property is forfeit to the church. That said, this is all very suspect. I do not complete my law degree, but I smell something rotten in this letter. There are questionable assertions in here. Assertions in here. Do you have any documentation on Renig's lease agreement with the Abbey? No, never seen anything. I didn't think the lease was with Renig. My family lived here for over a hundred years. That's true. It's quite likely the lease is with one of your father's ancestors and not Renig. If that lease allows for partition of the land, you would have the ability to allow others to farm here in exchange for payments to you. Jo Johan and Franz Buer never would. They want this land for themselves. Maybe if you talk sweet to El Peter, we could the girders to take Take it on. There's always the girders, if not them, the Pfeifers or one of the other families near the mill. Ah, uh, all my honey's turned to vinegar, boy, but maybe you're right about the family. I've never had any problems with the Gertners. In any case, it's clear that Abby is not being truthful about the existing lease on this property. As soon as they use Renig's death as an opportunity to try and change the existing lease into something more profitable. Yes, Renig's death, this is all the fault of that monster, Lorenz Rothvogel. If he were alive, I'd kill him myself. May he boil in hell for all eternity. I think it's time for you to tell me what your version that happened with the Baron. Renig, my husband, he caught that Vogel devil riding through our property and told him rightfully to leave. The Baron beat my Renig for it, beat him so savagely he took a cane to walk. Even his breathing pained him. No one could breathe deep so long as he lived, which wasn't long at all. Good God. That Baron was the worst kind of man, careless and cruel. He knew he could beat my Rannig and suffer no consequences, so he did. We were not even so low as animals to him, we were furniture. And I knew, I knew after Rannig died, the church would try to take what little I had left. This document only confirms it. All because of Lorenz Rothvogel. You know, that's a pretty compelling reason for you to have killed him. We're gonna say nothing. Since R Ranig left, I'm just waiting to die. Why should I have to go on living when he is gone? He has not even been dead a year. I hope I would follow him before the church came for what was left of our life. Your hand allows a cold to the widow and the childless. Where do you... Do you know where you'll go? A grave, probably. Ranig and I have no children, not even a daughter. Who else would have me? You know, it's a pretty compelling reason for you to have killed him. You said yourself if you do it, you, you would do it if you could. Who say you haven't already? Finally, some honesty from you. This was the real purpose of the visit all along. I'm an old woman, Andreas. Even walking from my from my bed to the door pains me. How could I kill a man in his prime? Not that it matters. I'm sure I'll take the blame for it anyway. It's just like I'm blamed for every runny nose and, and thrown horseshoe around here. The people in this town can't wait for me to die, and the Abbey vultures hate me for my contempt of them. None of it matters. I don't care what happens to me anymore. Thank you for your help, boy. You're the only one who's come calling since my ranting passed. Do you know? Now get out. I need to lie down. Of course, I was glad to help. For all the good of me, you old but No, of course, I'm glad to have helped. Huh. Time to eat. Just find someone to eat with. Okay. Alright. 
We've been going for two and a half hours. Um, we're going to end this here for now. We'll probably be on later tonight to play something. Thanks for watching. Stay sexy. This is great. I'm having a good time with this. My throat's starting to get sore from all the reading, though. Um, this is really cool. It's been interesting and fun, like, going through and trying to figure this out. Um, yeah, we'll continue this at a later time. Thanks for watching. Stay sexy. And uh, see you next time. Bye.